Welcome everybody to this PSB Investigator DRC tutorial. In this video I want to show you how to work with a brand new bareboard analysis of PSB Investigator. As demo board for this tutorial I decided to use the Intel Galileo board where the ODB++ data is free to use. I will now open the design from my recent list and as you can see here the design has one, two, three, four, five, six signal layers and two component layers. It is a high density interconnection board which uses 100 micrometer for trace and space on all layers. To do the analysis we go to the analysis tab and start the DRC analysis here. When doing the check it is important to know the preconditions. So please click on this question mark here and you get a, you get a detailed list about um, the preconditions which must be fulfilled in the design. So first one is that all signal layers must be positive. The stack up must be defined, the oversize for the mask layers must already be generated and a few attributes must exist like the SMD attribute or the test point attribute or also for plated and unplated drills there's an attribute drill plated or drill non-plated or drill wire but all this data is normally exported in ODB++ so if you open an ODB++ design all these, all these preconditions are already fulfilled. We now have the possibility to switch between different rule files. Um, as a standard we have two rule files defined but everybody can define own rule files and I will do this in the rule file manager here where you can easily enter the values for each single check and when we go through this list we see that for outer signal layers we can enter a space and a trace value and also a minimum angle for, for copper areas as well as a few parameters for the mask rules like the mask clearance for SMD pads and the mask clearance for test point pads. Um, in this design we work with a high-end rule because we have 50 micrometer oversize so that means the mask is the soldier mask clearance is 50 micrometer larger than the copper pad. For the inner signal rules we have the same space trace and the angle and for soldier mask we can define the coverage distance so for this design we also use 50 micrometer. We can enter value for the smallest soldier resist fillet which is around about 70 micrometer um, for most suppliers and for, for the soldier mask also the minimum value for, for the soldier mask opening and the minimum angle. The PTH rules are the mask clearance for the PTH and the mask clearance for PTH pads. So we have very good pictures here which explain the situation and we can decide whether we want to accept masks which are smaller than the PTH pad or we want to report them. Then of course we have to enter the annular ring values so the copper pad must be 100 micrometer larger than the drill itself and we can switch or we can enter different values for outer layers or for inner layers but as most suppliers have 100 micrometer as a rule for both we use 100 micrometers here. Then we can select if we want to accept missing pads on inner layers which is okay for us and the minimum distance to copper on inner layers if the soldier mo if the annular ring is, is missed. And then of course for the drill itself we can enter a minimum diameter and the minimum drill distance to other drills. And nearly the same can be done for non-plated um, drills so also the mask clearance which is 200 micrometer for most suppliers the distance to copper and this also we can uh, differ between outer and inner layers and the minimum diameter and minimum drill distance. If you would have an SPU design 
We can also enter values for microwires and for buried drills. But this is not so important for that design because we don't have some laser drills or some SPU technology here. So the high-end rule is perfect for us for this design. And he now asked me if he wants to if we want to apply the trace and space value from the rule file, which is okay for us. So we use 100 micrometers for space and for trace for all the signal layers and 70 micrometer as the smallest resist fillet which is allowed. We see that on those layers the minimum used trace is between 100 and 150 micrometer but as it is a power in the ground plane for example um, there might be a smaller trace with 150 micrometer but I know that there is 100 micrometer used for, for the space value so I leave 100 micrometer for space and trace. We can now decide whether we want to scan for opens or shorts and yes I want to do so. So every parameter is filled and we can click start. As you see the check is running in parallel for all layers so we use multi-threading in the background and the whole check is done in less than 10 seconds. Okay so let's look uh, let's take a look into the result list. So currently we have done the check only once, so we have only one result here. But if we would have done it twice or three times with different parameters for example, we would have different entries here and could select which one we want to, to see. So we can now iterate through the layers. First one is the soldier mask top. And there's one acute angle error, no two areas errors acute angle. So where the angle in the soldier mask opening is less than 45 degrees and some spacings so we have 27 micrometer distance which means that the soldier resist fillet is only 27 micrometer which is not really producible so the check value was 70 micrometer and as we see here there's minus one percent because this was also a parameter in the rule file manager that all the check values are reduced by 1%. It's hard to say why the PCB designer decided to use such a small distance between the soldier mask openings, but in every case this will be not producible and we have quite undefined soldier mask opening here. If we go to the next layer, the top layer, we will see that there's again small angles, in that case 18 degrees. So here the copper will probably also be a little bit changed by the PCB supplier. The next reported errors are coverage errors and we got a list of 11. Um, for example this one we see that there is a 31 micrometer distance between this copper track and the soldier mask opening for this pad and as a mismatch from the soldier mask opening is approximately up to 50 micrometer there is a risk that a small part of this copper track is exposed by this soldier mask opening. As a consequence we could have a short during soldiering when a small metal piece or a small metal past builds a bridge between those copper elements. So this arrow for example for sure is a critical error and should be changed. So as you can see we can mark different errors as critical and we can afterwards as you see here show only critical errors so we can define which errors really should be changed and export the result list to the PCB designer for example. The PCB designer can iterate through this list, looks only at the critical errors and corrects those in the in the original PCB layout design software. In this tutorial we won't go into detail for each reported error but just uh, let me show you a few other errors from the different categories like for example here exposed copper so the soldier mask opening for this pad or drill really exposes some some foreign copper and this also really should be changed. 
Next thing is missing mass PTH. So here we see that all the PTH, all the drills, I activate the drill layer here. They don't have a mask opening. So this is reported in general. Probably those drills will be plugged. So if the PCB designer decides to plug those drills, it's totally okay. Um, then we got some NPTH to copper. So this non-plated through hole is too close to this copper, which uh, gives the risk that this drill might connect to this copper area here. So the distance should be larger and should be at least um, 300 micrometers, but it's only 216 in that case. So then we got some same net spacings between the ground net here. Um, yeah, it's 90 micrometer. We have a space and trace value from 100 micrometer. So yes, it should be changed. Also some slivers, which means very small areas which are not reducible because it's much less than, than the space or trace value. And we got a few of them here, for example, also. So this will not be producible. Probably the PCB manufacturer will fill this up with copper, but we don't know really what he will do, but, it, but he can't produce it with 50, mic uh, 50 micrometer in size. Then PCB investigator reports some stops. That means some lines which just end somewhere without going into a copper pad or a an, an large copper area. So in this case, I think the stops are wanted. So we, we don't have to do something here. Then we got uh, wrong masks for non-plated through holes. So this non-plated through hole has a, a mask opening which is, um, let me just take a look, which is 140 micrometer. But we said in our roofer that we want to have 200 micrometers. So this probably will also cause some additional costs at least during manufacturing. Yes, then we have a wrong mask for normal plated through holes. Yeah, so as you see here, the soldier mask opening for this SMD pad touches the plated through hole. So there will be some, some laker in the drill, but not everywhere. So this is a really undefined situation here and really should be changed. If it is not changed, the drill might not be plugged completely, which can lead to some dirt in the drill and dirt in the drill or undefined soldier mask openings can cause quality issues during life cycle. The next error type is quite similar. We have a wrong mask for PTH pads. And if we select one, for example, we see that this PTH pad, so there is a drill inside, that this PTH pad is only partly covered by a soldier mask. Um, yeah, it's also an undefined situation and the PCB designer should take a look at those errors and maybe correct them. So last but not least, we have a wrong mask for SMD pads. For example here, so the soldier mask opening for this SMD pad is only 35 micrometer but we decided to have 50 micrometer in the rule file and also the whole design is rooted and created with 50 micrometer oversize. I don't know why only 35 micrometer are used here for this 45 angle degree um, components. Yes, in this way we can iterate through all the layers and mark the critical errors as critical and then export this result list and give it to the PCB designer who is the right person to correct those things, for example, in the PCB layout system of Mentor or Zuken or any else layout system. As shown in this tutorial, PCB Investigator Bearboard DRC is the perfect tool for your design review. It helps you to avoid manufacturing problems and reduce costs. Although some of the reported issues might be producible in smaller quantity, 
they might cause unneeded costs during mass production. A good example is a too small anode ring, which forces the PCB manufacturer to drill board by board and not for example five bores at the same time. So thanks for watching this tutorial and for more information please visit our website www.pcb-investigator.com Thank you.